Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Math and Physics Podcast. This is episode, honorary episode, number 20. Uh, I'm your host, Parker. And I'm Ray, and today we're going to be talking about some really cool stuff. We're going to be talking about life, or potential life, on other planets in our universe. That is correct. So, the first thing, when we talk about life in the universe... The first thing that comes to mind is, you know, a habitable planet slash habitable zones around Mm -hmm. a star. Because obviously, you know, life as we know it can't really exist in, you know, extreme temperatures. So what happens is that around a star, there's this zone kind of, um, what's it called, an interval of space Mm -hmm. where... The temperatures remain, you know, relatively moderate and can support life, like, uh, you know, plants, animals, like humans. the Earth. Yeah. Yes, sir. And this zone is called the Goldilocks zone. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. Yeah, and if you think about it, temperatures on Venus are ridiculously hot, mm-hmm. and temperatures mm-hmm. on Mars get ridiculously cold cold so just by comparing like to one planet over you can see just how like drastic the changes are versus Mm -hmm. on planet earth where you know the coldest temperatures on planet earth are like minus 60 degrees celsius Mm -hmm. in like antarctica antarctica yeah and then the hottest i think the hottest temperatures like land probably like sahara right I don't know. Uh, yeah, in the Sahara, I think it's like 60 degrees or like 55 degrees to 60 degrees Celsius. Mm-hmm. Also, I should say that Venus is kind of like a special case scenario because of its clouds. So technically, I don't think you can say that, oh, we can't live on it because it's not in the Goldilocks zone. Because I think if I'm not mistaken, was it like Mars or wasn't the? I swear there was another planet in our solar system that either used to be in the Goldilocks zone or kind of almost is in the Goldilocks zone now? Or Um, am I... I I don't know what exactly you're referring to, but I remember, like, you remember the the terraforming presentation we went to? Yeah, yeah. And he talked about how, like, some planets aren't in the Goldilocks zone, but you can change the planets so that, like, they're still not in the Goldilocks zone, but they're still habitable enough Mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. like artificial like if artificial modifications were made to the planet it would still be able to support life okay so after a quick search on google mars and venus are in fact in or at least mars is in fact the goldilocks zone but it is on the outskirts like way 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 outskirts so that's exactly why i guess it's cold also like a thing about the goldilocks zone it's not like a very tiny interval in space that's close Mm -hmm. to the star it's a pretty pretty huge area of space that a planet can be and if it is we just consider it to be habitable doesn't mean it has life just means it potentially could have life yeah because mars in fact does have it has polar ice caps right Mm -hmm. yeah in the on the north and south pole which is very interesting news <laughs> imagine so, though it, but wasn't mars like an earth-like planet and the whole theory is that there was kind of a solar wind and stuff like that when that happened and wiped out mars's atmosphere mm-hmm. and all that hot, hot stuff there's so many theories on mars yeah. right now i think <laughs> mars is mars's atmosphere is like okay this is not fact checked yeah. at all <laughs> <laughs> but i think it's like three percent the density of Earth's atmosphere. Okay, how about um, we'll search again, that up. <laughs> a quick. Okay, density of Mars, Mars's atmosphere. Yeah, so it's five. So it's five. Five percent. So Earth's density is higher than that of Mars. So if Earth's is five point five grams per cubic centimeter, and this is air, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, oh, no, 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 sorry, sorry, this is Earth's density. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I'm like, air doesn't have five grams per cubic centimeter. Okay, not, okay. <laughs> I was searching for the density of the planet instead of the atmosphere uh, by accident. Right. So the planet, obviously, Earth is more dense because it's, it's a bigger planet as well, right? Yeah, and 
I that, will tell that you shouldn't, this, though. That shouldn't have any effect on that the shouldn't really. Okay, that's actually completely wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, and so something about Mars is that the way we could terraform Mars is by, one, ejecting a lot of carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere so you can create the greenhouse effect and mm -hmm. therefore warming up the actual planet. We can, you know, also... This was kind of like a meme by. I think uh, I think I know Elon what you're gonna Musk. say. But yeah, nuke the ice caps. Yeah, nuke the ice caps. I was just gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> it's an <smart> idea. <laughs> it's definitely an idea, and mm -hmm. well, right now I don't. I think it's pretty much out of reach uh, for us to actually complete because of you know the actual fact that we need to mm -hmm. bring the nukes to Mars and to actually Mars, yeah. do the whole thing, but. uh it's still an idea, and ideas are always good to contemplate. Mm -hmm. In terms of other planets we can terraform, I know um, Venus, it's not really terraforming, but like the the air cities, the cities in the sky, mm -hmm. because the like the atmosphere and the temperatures, on top of like the toxic clouds uh, that are close to the surface of, of Venus, um, so that little area above mm -hmm. is kind of similar to uh, the temperatures and whatever on Earth. So the idea would be to make cities on top of big balloons mm -hmm. so that we can just live over the clouds. Mm -hmm. There are some a uh, lot of theories, especially with Venus, because Venus is a pretty crazy world, to be honest, pretty crazy, crazy planet. And that's a interesting but such a weird science fiction yeah. theory like i don't really see <laughs> seeing that happen in reality but i mean it would be cool yeah but i don't think it's very realistic One by the way other thing by the way sorry oh, yeah, i should say yeah. i i got the results from my quick search <laughs> and yeah. um we see that at the surface level this may uh, th i don't under maybe this because this says the mean pressure on the at the surface level is 0.6 kilopascals 0.6 earth is 101 kilopascals that means this is 0.6 okay. percent of the earth's surface uh, uh surface pressure yeah so it's a lot 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 less basically yeah. we said like 30 percent or three percent or something it's 0.6 percent yeah so yeah the idea would be <laughs> just to pump gases into the atmosphere mm -hmm. to make it make it more habitable so yeah, one thing I heard also is that the, uh, one of Saturn's moons, do you, do you I, know the... Uh, Titan, right? Yeah, no, Titan. No, Titan, that's I'm right, sure. Titan. Titan has methane oceans. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's cool. all there is to say about that. <laughs> I think there's some pretty cool planets in our solar system with some really cool things. I think, yeah, Titan is the one with the... With the ice, with basically the ice surface or like the methane surface. Yeah. And uh, we have, and then we have Mars, Venus. We also have another one, don't we? Somewhere like in our solar system where it was like, could be life. I don't know. I think and any other planet out yeah. besides Venus and Mars mm -hmm. is just not possible. Mm -hmm. But there's a moon. Like there's a, I think yeah, it's there's probably a one moon. of Saturn's there's probably moons a moon. is... Mm -hmm. is again workable. again this is all just in our solar system yeah i mean the entire kepler project is basically to find these planets in habitable zones and to hope that we can reach there and i'm pretty sure they've already released it but i think it's a google ai bot that can actually see if a planet is in the goldilocks zone there's this new ai bot that either google rolled out or someone oh, that's pretty cool or some, some some ai thing basically that can detect when a planet is crossing the star, the respective star. Oh, I've and seen using that. this information, it can determine how far away, depending depending on how big the planet is, compared to the star, the light, the luminosity, etc. So it can tell you how far the planet is away from the star. So therefore that tells you basically if it's in a habitable zone or an inhabitable zone. And all the Kepler planets that we found till today, I believe, are all in the habitable zone. But they're just, again, too far to reach in sufficient time. That's the main problem that we're dealing with right now. Yeah, but it can also tell you the composition of the atmosphere, right? When it crosses in front of the star. I'm pretty sure that's one of the things it can also do. 
which mm -hmm. which is a huge mm -hmm. indicator to yeah like yeah I I've, I've been reading how, on the yeah. how um livable it is I guess one thing I wanted to talk about also mm -hmm. and this has a lot to do with life in the universe is the Kardashev scale. So the Kardashev scale is basically a, a scale to measure the advancedness of a civilization. So the scale is on, it goes from one to seven, I think, or one to 10. Anyways, it, it, it's something like, are we low or are we high? No, yeah, we're we're low. We're low. Um, what are we on the scale? I thought I had it. We're in like front what? Of me. What's our number? But I don't, I don't think I do. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, didn't. okay, yeah, we're t we're type one, literally. <laughs> we're type one on the scale. Oh, okay. Oh, you're talking about types, type civilization. Those, those are three types. There's only three types of civilizations. You're not talking about seven. The the scale you're okay. talking about is different from the type of civilization. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about those three types, like type one, type two, type three, where it depends on how much colonization of the galaxy that you've done, basically. It's in that Kurzgesagt video. There's two different uh, things. So the the first one is based on how much you control. So type one is yeah, the Yeah, there's like one type, type and two one scale. Is, or the planet you're living on. Type two is mm -hmm. your solar system, and type three is your galaxy, which I think... I think going from type mm -hmm. 2 to type 3 is a way bigger jump than going from type 1 to type 2. Oh, wait, I don't... Wait, how would you even go from... Are you sure type 2 is solar system? How would you go from planet to solar system if yours is the only planet like in the habitable zone? Or, you know, like, how will you colonize well, no, it, the solar it, it, system? No, it doesn't mean habiting uh, the solar system. It means collecting resources from the entire solar system. Oh, yeah. oh yeah! It wasn't about habiting. That's true. It's about being. Able it's about energy and resources, which I think going from mm. going from type one to type two is a lot harder than going. I mean, a lot easier than going from type two to type three. Because have you done the um, astronomy unit on Khan Academy? Yeah, I think so. Pretty sure. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> like the the first lesson like one of the first lessons he talks about scale mm -hmm. and he talks about like how big our solar mm -hmm. system is and then like what's just on the outskirts of our solar system and just to get outside of our solar system is you know incredibly difficult yeah it takes a very very long like voyager one got out of our solar system yeah. just like what five six years ago or something like that yeah exactly. and it was what sent in this 60, 70, I don't even know. Yeah. And to Something get... Very long time ago. Yeah, to get from from Earth to the nearest star is 4.2 oh. light years, which we've talked about before. I forget on which yeah. episode, but... Uh, right. On one of the episodes. <laughs> and it's going to take episodes. a very long time. I think right now the problem that we have with, you know, either resources, colonization, or even all of this basically is just getting there and the fact that we can't. Yeah. Because we just don't have the technology whatsoever to reach these planets like they're just so monstrously far away with our technology right now that i don't think in like the coming 50 60 years we're gonna be getting there like i i don't think it's po okay let me ask you this obviously this is very subjective when do you think humans will arrive at the closest planet like another star will they ever do you think i think yes but mm. I have no idea when <laughs> because it's so <clears throat> hard true. to tell. Like, obviously, there needs to be mm -hmm. some huge advancement mm -hmm. in the engineering world because going there with, with, with rockets and fuel is not the answer. There has to be mm -hmm. some type of, like, weird gravitational warping slash acceleration <laughs> method that we haven't figured out yet. That, that would be so cool. Yeah, bro. <laughs> uh, have you watched um, Bob Lazar, um, his documentary slash his interview on Joe Rogan? Probably not. If not, you should. His his okay. interview on Joe Rogan is crazy. He he's a physicist. Sorry, well, uh, can you repeat the name? Bob Lazar, L A Z A R. So he's a physicist that like I'm pretty sure he like graduated at MIT or whatever, and. Mm -hmm. So he worked at a laboratory that is associated with Area 51. And 
he, you know, he tells his whole story uh, on his interview with Joe Rogan. But basically, like he worked there, he worked on alien spacecrafts and he worked with anti-gravity like engines. What? So, yeah, it's wait, crazy. Wait, 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 what, 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 what? I know, what? I know. It's, he, wait, 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 wait. It's literally unbelievable. Worked... What? <laughs> yeah. You're saying this man worked on alien spacecraft. Yeah, bro. So why don't why didn't we get any of that technology? Because the US is hiding it all. It's all it's like US. Oh it's my, like, are you serious with this conspiracy? It's like wait, this military. guy but no wait, it's not even you're saying this guy fully interviewed this. Like yeah, he said Yeah, it. like go watch the interview. Like literally go watch it. It's it's sick. Wait, anti what? Yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. What? One he minute, said one he was, minute. He, he was if working, we had like, anti gravity, what? No, but one listen, minute. listen, listen, look. Okay. There was there was like a uh what's it called? Like a generator. And basically, uh-huh. when you turned it on, it felt like it felt like uh, two like charges or like magnets with mm-hmm. the same pole. It would like repulse, but it would do that with matter. Like you can put your hand, and it would feel like a magnet is repulsing your hand. Like it's crazy. What the hell? But yeah. Let's get back to talking about life in the Wait, universe. Wait, what minute? <laughs> if this thing exists, why aren't we? Oh, yeah, yeah. We should probably get back to the podcast. But I'm just saying, this is a pretty crazy thing. I mean, everyone should like well, watch Ray, this podcast Ray, right now. This is this is like dangerous technology to just release into the world. Like, no, I'm not saying release it. No, 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 no. I'm not saying release it so that literally everyone can use it. I'm just saying control it. Exactly. But use that, it. That's why they're putting it in a laboratory. But at least use it, right? But that's N- what, not well, even use it. Well, they're studying it. They're trying to figure out what it is. An analogy that that Bob made mm-hmm. on the podcast. He's like, imagine giving a gas powered engine to like somebody in the 1500s or like a nuclear reactor to somebody in the 1500s they would open it up get like radiation poisoning and die and no one would know why so like it's it's kind of like the same analogy but to us like we're not trying to just like fuck with the anti-gravity machine and just die for some reason that we don't really understand or have some like crazy repercussions so they're trying to like study it on the down low and like yeah, figure out what so, it's all about but this kind of like completely revolutionizes science if we've wait one how have we even found these okay you know what i'm gonna do yeah. a, lot of, a lot of research on yeah. this guy because this guy sounds really interesting yeah. we're, we're, we can talk about it in another episode for sure this sounds really cool to talk yeah. about We'll definitely talk about it. Yeah. So I googled uh, the Kardashev scale, mm-hmm. and there are okay. there are six types. Okay. Six. Types. Actually, there are seven because it starts at zero. So wait, so wait, wait. Are they types or is it a scale? Well, it's a scale, but like each each integer has like it's called like a, like a milestone, like it's a type. Once okay, you so cross. it's not like so you can even be like a one point three, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I think I think I've seen this. Yeah. Continue. So type zero is a civilization that harnesses the energy of its own planet, but not to the full potential, which is what we are. We are type zero because we're not obviously not harvesting every single drop of energy that is, that is going on on this planet. Isn't it like a hundred percent of the sun is, or of your, of your parents' star is type one? No, Isn't type, type one is a hundred percent of the total energy of the home planet. So, of the home planet, so which is the star, then the star. So, so type two is uh, now. Yeah, you're you're capable of harnessing the total energy of the mm. uh, like mother Parent star, star, I guess. Yeah, mother star. Yeah, and one way to do that. Oh God, I forget what it's called. But oh, I know. What you, are you talking about that sphere around yeah, the sun? Yeah. I thought, okay, I think is I think it, I know is what it like a about. like a heliosphere or something like that. Yeah, helio. No, wait, no, helio is, no, helio is sun. Helio is sun. Yeah, yeah. heliosphere. Heliosphere makes so, sense. So it's basically just, I, I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, isn't it basically just a huge array of mirrors around the sun? No, Obviously it's, not it's solar panels. So, so what you isn't do? Isn't it that? Um, wait, I, I, wait, wait, wait. Wasn't there like another one where like the mirrors would focus? the energy because it's just mirrors is being reflected yes. onto satellites onto earth and then they would then harness it with solar power no that was an idea to warm up uh mars so what you do is you, you have mirrors 
that basically trap like the light and the heat from the sun and like focus it in on the planet so it like warms up the planet but mm. what this is is actually like you just send a bunch of like satellites that are actually just big solar panels, solar panels. Mm -hmm. and then what you do is you get like so many around the sun that it starts to like crowd the sun and you're just gathering so much energy from all of these solar panels that you know what is it like one like one minute of the sun's energy can power the earth for like mm -hmm. a century it's, I know, you're I like know the something also, crazy like also, that um by the way for fact checkers we were wrong about the heliosphere heliosphere <laughs> is something created by the sun it's a, it's basically a plasma bubble around the sun so okay. we were it's not what we're talking about okay we were talking oh, about oh it's called else. a dyson it's like sphere this. it's called a dyson sphere dyson is it the Dyson Sphere? Yeah, it's a Dyson Sphere. I swear, I swear the Dyson Sphere was the black hole one. No. No, it's Which not. was the black hole one? Wasn't there a black hole sphere? I don't oh, know. Oh, Dyson. Yeah, okay. This is the Kursk Zat video. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Yeah, hypothetical megastructure that encompasses a star and captures la large percentages of yeah. its power output. That would be yeah. epic. <laughs> and I read about this. I'm pretty sure this is like from Kursk Zat. They say like the easiest way mm -hmm. would be to go to Mercury and build like like using the materials on mercury good. to build the solar panels and then sending them from mercury because the gravity is lower mm -hmm. so it's easier you're saving on like fuel costs and uh traveling costs and th things like that that would be the easiest way to do it but i don't think but again we're... by then by that time we would already have to have been able to get to mercury comfortably like comfortably get to mercury able to harness whatever its core has i i don't to know too much about mercury and as long as so i guess basically we have to be a full type one before we get into the type two right yeah. so moving on to type three. Oh yeah there's still like four more yeah continue yeah <laughs> so <laughs> it's a civilization capable of inhabiting and harnessing the energy of an entire galaxy take that in this is literally a logarithmic scale. Like you're going up in like Bro, magnitudes. one to two is so much easier than two yeah. to three. Two to three is I'm crazy. Saying, what? Well, actually, that's that's not true because okay, it harnessing is, sun versus galaxy. Yeah, but do you know how hard it is to harness all the energy? Yeah, the of sun. The sun? Yeah, no, no. Once you have, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm just saying yeah. the galaxy. I mean, unless we have wormholes. I don't really know how we're going to do okay, that. Okay, but Ray, once you have the technology to harness the entire energy of the sun, then you probably know a little bit about space travel, a little bit more about space travel in that case. Mm. Like, I mean, yeah, you would obviously know a lot more. Yeah. but <laughs> Okay, take this well, in. <laughs> okay, to be honest, I don't even think we can we can talk about this, right? Because, like, with our current technology... Yeah. I don't even think this is a Ray, valid <laughs> argument because we can't Ray, really guess, bring the argument together. Guess what together. type four right. is? <laughs> what 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 type four? <laughs> type four is uh, a civilization capable of harnessing the energy of the whole universe. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. How are there three more? <laughs> what? Okay, we'll this just we'll no just sense. get we'll just get through these. Okay, beyond. Okay, to be honest, beyond type three. It's pretty hypothetical. Like, it's <laughs> it's pretty theoretical <laughs> after that, you know? So, type mm -hmm. four is... Also, do remember, all of these types were just made by some lazy-ass human. Yeah. So, like, it's not like an actual scale. No, it's just something no, it that is, we basically made up. I'm no, pretty but, sure no, he was, like, a I smart mean, guy. there's no... It's not... Because... No, no, no. I know he's a smart guy, but the scale is has been made in, a, in reference to us. Whatever yeah. we know... We can put on the scale. The thing is, the scale is measuring what we don't know. So how can we put what we know on a scale that measures what we don't know? Yeah. So I don't really think anything above the type that we are is technically like it doesn't have to be exact. Well, that's type, not true because it's because, all just because yeah. like type one and type two, they seem pretty achievable. Like it'll take a while, but like. One we're on is the, okay, we're yeah. On the way there. It, a while, but it's doable. Doable. So Three is still crazy. Just to remind you guys, uh, type four is 
harnessing the entire universe. Type five. What's five? Type five hmm. is the energy of multiple universes. Oh, okay. So that's again yes. complete. That's theoretical, based on the fact that there are multiple universes. And then type six. Oh my! What the hell is higher than this? Type six is just like it's a civilization that has the ability to create and destroy universes. Oh, so like, yes. So I, basically, I actually do think I remember that one. I think I remember type six. It's like mm. it's like at that point, your 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 civilization is a god. It can create universes, destroy universes, and basically control as much energy as you want at any point in time. I mean, yeah, that is really cool. That is that, that is really cool. Yeah. Damn. Also, um, a big thing that I really should have said earlier on in the podcast, mm-hmm. and I, and we're also coming near the end, so I'll just kind of wrap it up with this. But the ever uh, there's a very big difference between life on a planet and intelligent life yeah, on a planet that that is, we haven't really that spoken about too much that is a huge difference for example on earth life began like basically when earth was formed because life is ba- is just molecules coming together and them being able to communicate with each other creating a cell and that's basically life like a unicellular organism that doesn't do anything obviously not intelligent <laughs> unicellular is still technically life but it still takes hundreds of millions of years if not billions of years for the first sign of actual intelligent life to form when was the first intelligent life on Uh, earth i'm not not even exactly sure but first intelligent life on earth also you need to define intelligent life because Mm -hmm. very if like if you consider animals to be intelligent then like what's the difference between an animal and a multi-cell like a multicellular being Mm -hmm. not much right they they eat they survive they protect themselves they try to get away from predators it's kind of the same deal but on a different scale if you consider intelligent uh life to be more like beings that are kind of aware about Mm -hmm. more than just day-to-day things like eating and surviving (laughs) okay so you so basically what you're saying is you wouldn't define animals as intelligent beings no i'm saying i'm saying it's important to define what intelligent life is Mm -hmm. like if you're saying okay if you're saying yeah there's intelligent life on this planet like what are you what are you talking about like are there people solving Mm -hmm. quadratic equations or they're just like like animals and tribes of or packs mm-hmm. of animals coagulating together. So the exact definition, right, is that beings that can learn and understand things looking for signs of intelligent life on other planets. Oh. So knowing this, I think we can safely say that animals are not intelligent. Yeah. Because I don't think that they're trying to find intelligent no. life on other planets. No. I just think that they're chilling, killing people, yeah. killing their own, getting some food, stuff like that. I don't think it's they're yeah. too intelligent. So I guess we would be considered decently, very decently intelligent. So yeah, finding finding intelligent life on yeah. other planets mm-hmm. is exponentially really, harder than finding... I, I don't even know how we're going to do that without yeah. physically going there. Yeah. Like, Actually, how would you know if the life is intelligent? Well, like meeting halfway, you know, like if if there's another intelligent life form, then they like. Well, I send... guess you could kind of see like if they have satellites around, stuff like that. Yeah. They could send like radio waves or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then we would get mm-hmm. them at the same time that we sent them if we sent them at the same time. But yeah. Also, this is also depending on if we send it in the right direction. Yeah. And there, are all, there are all a lot of ifs. Yeah, that's right. In this Which is why but... finding mm-hmm. life in the universe is difficult to say the no least. but that's the thing does life exist in the universe i definitely think it does yeah right do you yeah i, I mean i i think it definitely could exist in the very high probability the fact that yeah. what are we the only civilization in all of the universe there's a nice chance also we didn't talk about things like the great filter and uh like the probabilities and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that we are so the only... again, we can have part twos and part threes of and course. we have so much time. Of course. So we're good. <laughs> so yeah, I guess we can cut this one off here and save mm-hmm. all the 
interesting bits that we have to talk about for next time because we are running out of time um Mm -hmm. so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this episode make sure to follow leave a comment or email us we'll put the email Email in the description email us for any queries any questions or if you have any topic ideas just shoot us an email that's right and we'll probably reply back we'll we'll definitely we'll we'll definitely anything else (laughs) what else are we doing (laughs) (laughs) what else will we do (laughs) so yeah it's been fun i am Mm -hmm. your host parker and i'm ray and we will see you soon see ya